We all know how Dolce & Gabbana are pretty consistent with releasing summer flankers of some of the more popular fragrances in their catalog. Of course, we have Light Blue, which is such a classic, and so many other brands took inspiration from it in creating their own fragrances. Here we have a flanker for the year 2022. This one is called Light Blue Italian Love. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new women's fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's review on Light Blue Italian Love by Dolce & Gabbana, and I tell you all about this fragrance, the notes, the smell, the performance, the perfumer, comparisons, longevity, all that good stuff, I want to start things off by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. Thank you so much. It would mean so much to me. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload these daily videos. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you take something of value from today's episode. So the perfumer for this fragrance is Olivier. Cresp. He's an amazing perfumer. He did the original. He also did My Goodness Angel by Teddy Mugler, released in the early 90s. I had the pleasure of meeting him on a number of different occasions. We still talk on social media. I met him initially in 2018 at the Fragrance Foundation Awards. And then once again, when he and I actually did an event together for the launch of Sedley by Parfum de Marly, which is also an amazing fragrance. Now, the first thing that I want to mention here is this smells nothing like the original. So if you you're a fan of the original, you're very aware of how it smells and the performance and all of the notes contained therein. This one actually does take things in a different direction. And I found the same to be the case for the men's counterpart. So the men's Italian love, very tart. It has this very unique, almost musky citrus note. And you're going to get the same thing here. So you get the musk in the base. There's also musk mallow, which is known as ambrette. And that can also give off a slightly sweet musk. I don't want to say animalic because it's not animalic, but it definitely gives off a musky vibe. You're going to get some sandalwood in the base, but you also get this Italian lemon note in the opening. And I think it's that bright, effervescent, slightly tart lemon with the musk and the rose that really shapes up the personality of this fragrance. There's also jasmine, but I'm not getting a whole lot of jasmine. In any case, I'm excited to talk to you about the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, for a split second, you're going to get something that reminds you of the original light blue, but then this fragrance starts to go in a completely different direction. So you're going to say, oh yeah, that's light blue, all right, but you have this really tart lemon ingredient, very tart, very musky, almost like sour at one point. And I can say the same thing about the men's counterpart. And I think it's that aspect of the fragrance that is going to be polarizing to a lot of people out there, especially if you're not really crazy about tart or sour or bitter ingredients. I know grapefruit can be like that sometimes. I know yuzu can be like that sometimes, but I actually do enjoy that because it has a certain quirkiness to the fragrance that you're not going to get from something on the nondescript side, like a bergamot or something like that, right? The lemon in here, very lively, very nice personality to it. A little polarizing, I have to admit that. And, you know, my wife wanted me to buy this for her because she's just a fan of light blue, as it is. Um, she also wore Aqua Fiorentina by Creed on our wedding day. And that is almost kind of like the niche version of light blue. I know there's also an eccentric molecule fragrance, I think it's eccentric one, smells very similar to light blue. And so she does like those light blue DNA types of fragrances. But in this fragrance in particular, you have that tart lemon in the opening. The rose in here is very smooth, very calm, not too loud. And that musky vibe that you get in the base is on the clean side of things. So here's the thing. If you give this fragrance about an hour to settle down, facets and nuances of the original will start to come out again. So it's like in the opening, you're like, oh, it's a light blue fragrance. And you're like, wait a second, there's something very tart, something musky, something bitter, but very citrusy about this fragrance. And I think it's very likable. And you know, in the opening, you're bound to get noticed while you wear it. And then you give it about an hour or so to settle down. And then it starts to remind you again of the original light blue. So here's what I have to say. 
as a consumer, if you like light blue, please bear in mind that a lot of these summer flankers tend to go in a very different direction. However, if you're looking for something that has a little bit of that light blue DNA, but definitely goes in a bright summer direction and you don't mind, you know, these sort of um, quirky, kind of sour, bitter um, citrus ingredients, I think you might really like this one. And I actually really enjoy it. I think it has that quirky quality about it. It's actually much easier to wear than the men's version. The men's version is definitely on the sour, musky, almost like bordering on an animalic side of things. You're not necessarily gonna get that with this fragrance, but very likable. I personally really like it. My wife hasn't really worn it. A yeah, she's actually worn it a few times, but she's been prioritizing some other fragrances so far this summer. Wind Flowers by Creed, she wears that thing probably every single day, but I'm gonna remind her that she hasn't worn this one in a long time, so. Thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, it's a true flanker in the sense that it will kind of remind you of the original, but it still does things in its own way, which I have a lot of respect for. The overall smell, I think for some people, it's gonna be a little polarizing in the opening, but after a while, it actually does settle down to something very inviting, very accommodating, and something mass appealing. Longevity on this one, you can expect about six to six and a half hours on your skin. Projection is okay for the first 45 minutes to an hour, especially when that Italian lemon is really bright and zesty and exuberant. And then it does start to sit closer to the skin right around hour three, three and a half. So the performance on this one could be a lot better, but I think a lot of people are gonna be wearing it for the smell rather than the performance. They know in the summertime, you know, the sun in your skin just eats up the fragrance. Versatility on this one, definitely casual, uh, definitely summertime, feminine leaning, and I think it gives off a youthful vibe. So somebody who's a little bit younger would probably enjoy this over somebody in their 50s, 60s, 70s. You know, you can wear something a lot more sophisticated for your money's worth if you fall within that age range. And there's a lot of amazing fragrances out there. But, you know, these are all just recommendations. At the end of the day, you can wear what you want. You can wear what makes you happy. That's a beautiful thing about fragrances. These are mere recommendations, right? At the end of the day, you gotta trust your own nose and go with your own sensibilities. Presentation, I think, is really cool. I like that sort of contrast between the blue and the white. Kind of reminds me of the Greek flag a little bit. Not so Italian in terms of the color scheme, but it does remind me of the Greek flag. Maybe I'll encourage my wife to bring this with her when we go to Greece this summer. I actually plan on traveling soon. Hope I have a good time. My final verdict on this fragrance is, I think it's great. I think it's a great summer flanker. Just the right amount of quirk. <laughs> to not turn you off, but to make things a little different in the opening, that musky citrus, that's a little bit on the bitter and sour side of things, but it definitely quiets down and you know that bitterness doesn't linger for the entire duration of the scent. Let me know what you think about this fragrance if you've had the opportunity to smell it either in stores, I bought mine from Macy's, or if you own it, uh, maybe you've been wearing it for these past few weeks or months. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. That was my review on Dolce & Gabbana Italian or light blue Italian love. Sorry, the names are getting longer and longer. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload future videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you took something of value from today's episode or if you learned something new today. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Bye.